Hi everyone, I'm go going to go over um, chapter one of the Nurse Assistant Basic Study Guide book. Um, they call the chapters modules. So we'll get started with that. Since this is our first chapter, I want you to I want you to see the book so you're on the same um, book as me. If it's a different edition, the pages may not line up, but essentially it hasn't changed much. So you should be just fine. Just make sure you're doing the correct um, module, they call it. As you see here, they're called modules instead of chapters. And I, I will refer to them more as chapters, but I'm lining up the modules and the chapters in Canvas to go with the book. And this book is for nurse assistants. So essentially, you can use this book to, uh, um, for a class for CNA. We don't. It's a very simple book. But through the 16 chapters, the first 15 are everything that the CNA class has to cover, except for one another chapter they recently added, they being the Department of Health for CNA. So um, on abuse, but our chapter two in this uh, covers that also. So again, if I'm everything from module one, I'll, I'll lecture on the chapter and then do everything in module one of the um, of the uh, uh, of Canvas. And. Okay, as you can see for module one, it, this book begins with uh, need to know words. And I have some of those in the PowerPoint. Um, and, and so um, you, you should look these over because if you don't know them, they're within the chapter, but honestly, just Google them. So you um, can figure out. Uh, what 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 they mean and i had to auto zoom that so you could see it better again the need to know words are always on the first page the objectives are here i won't do those in um in most of the powerpoint so but you could follow along our powerpoints are very or a little bit dry in that there's not pictures in most of them but you can fall, follow along with the book. And as you can see, chapter one is only a few pages. Okay, so this is the personal home care aid class. You'll also be known as a caregiver or a personal care aid. So although it says nurse assistant in the book, it's the same procedures. And I will try to tell you when it's a little different because instead of reporting um, to the a nurse in the hospital or in the uh, skilled nursing facility where you will not be working as a caregiver, you would report to the agency. But essentially, most almost everything is the same. Okay. Um, need to know words. There is one of the words is a certification. There is no certificate. We give you a certificate at the end of this, this class. However, to work for assisted livings and um, home care agencies, you do not need a certification. Um, um, they love it, you to have a CNA certification, but that, that is not a requirement, okay? Um, and hopefully we'll be practicing some of our practical and clinical skills online. Okay, so um, what are the roles and responsibilities of you as a, a caregiver? first of all, to treat each resident. And so the word I'm going to use for um, the patient you're taking care of is in our realm is usually either a resident because they're living at home how, or a client. And sometimes they call them participants too, but it's usually a resident or client, client more, client more often, but not always. Um, so we're going to treat them with respect and dignity. Um, and, and so our part is to contribute to the health. Safety is huge. Safety, prevent them from falling, prevent them from getting a urinary tract infection by cleaning them up well, um, and the security of our uh, residents. So big thing is to promote good health. You know, hey, brush your teeth, um, prevent harm. 
stop them from falling, to have them move in the bed so they don't get bed sores and prevent and control infections. Okay, um, and just going back to infections, it's really when we think in healthcare, infection control or prevention is under safety, okay? Because if a patient gets sick with a new infection brought in maybe from you or from someone else, um, that's a safety concern, okay? And if you get sick taking care of them, that's a safety concern. Um, okay, so important skills that you'll be doing in this role, maintaining a clean, clean and safe environment, especially if you go into home care, you will be cleaning up at, um, in the areas that you're working. Know your, knowing the expectations of, of what's expected of you, so know your job description. Um, and the, your what your role is in that job description um, with that particular person and knowing your professional boundaries. And then we're gonna go over confidentiality, um, not sharing information with people to follow directions, being honest and reliable, uphold patient rights, um, show respect, be sensitive, we're going to learn about good body mechanics. So these are the things we're gonna be learning this year. Infection control, being a good listener, recognizing abnormal conditions, be considerate, keen observation skills. You're going to be the eyes and ears of for that client, and you need to advocate and communicate those. I can't emphasize enough that enough. Be thorough and accurate, and stay current with what you're supposed to be doing. Now, a little different with caregiving. There's a medical team if someone's being discharged from the hospital. Um, however, this is more with the CNA. We always have these people, um, the resident or the client. We usually call them client if they're doing home care. Um, there's a doctor, family members, the nursing staff. You may have physical therapy, PT, occupational therapy, OT, and speech therapy, uh, ST. There could be um, social workers and clergy and dietitians. However, it, since we're not a medical, we're, we're providing non-medical, um, there's usually, there's always, so I'm gonna go to the next slide, with the home care agency or assisted living, the, the team is primarily, and this isn't in the book, it's gonna be the client, right? Always clients the center, that's of, of, of everything. So that's a test question when you take your first test. Um, the family, the caregiver, which is you, and the agency or the assisted living, because those are two places you'll probably be working, they're RN or LVN. Now, the RN and LVN may be communicating more things to you. You may have people, OT and, and uh, occupational therapy or speech therapy come into even into the home or in, into the assisted living. It's just not always because we're not doing a medical model. Um, but test question, it's the same if we were a medical model or not medical model, who's the most important member of the team? And it is the resident, or you could call them a client. Um, and this is important, who will spend the most time with the resident? It's going to be you. And that's why you have to be really keen for observation and changes. And, and at this level is just to report them. And, and, and then it's not like you can't discuss those things with your, the RN or LVM or agency. There may not be an RN or LVM, but the agency person of what are we gonna do and so they can relay that, that information also to the family. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Going a little fast here. This is a long. Okay. So with home care, the same as with um, if you're working as a CNA, you know, in a home health agency, there's going to be a care plan. It's also known as a plan of care. If it's in the home, it's plan of care. If it's in a facility, it's a care plan or activity plan. So um, on these plans, especially I'm going to emphasize like home care now, that it may include the, the problems, the goals that we have. So the goal may be to 
just keep a person clean and give them a meal. The goal may be to get that uh, client up walking twice a day. Um, so um, the approach, uh, uh, how are you going to do that? So some of these things you're not making up yourself. These are like written down and you can talk to um, whoever your chain of uh uh, the chain of command is so if you have an RN above you or if you have it may just be an um a, an agency with an office doesn't have to be a medical person right the administrators of um, of assisted living, living do not have to have any kind of medical background but they still need some kind of plan okay and it's definitely a team effort um and what is going to contribute to the client's well-being well a lot of things we just take for granted uh, the proper medical attention. So, you know, they could be, go to the doctors or they could have nurses come in um, a, a balanced diet, you know, good diet, exercise, enough rest and, and sleep. Um, and as we know with COVID, how important emotional and social and spiritual support is. That social element is so important. Um, they have kids, you know, when they have um, kids warehoused more as babies and they're not getting the care like in an orphanage they used to have like in Russia and in other parts of the country and we probably have in our country too, I don't know, but not now, um, where children were, were fed, they were like babies taken care of, fed, cleaned and everything, but no one told them they had failure to thrive. They, even though they were getting the calories, they didn't gain weight and, and, and they could die from that. It's just so that's so important. Okay. Um, being professional, always treating others the way you would want to be treated. Mm, that's like the golden rule, right? Um, and you, you it to be in this uh, profession, you need to have a desire to help others because sometimes it's not easy and have that caring attitude. You need to be dependable. If you're, are you going to come to work or are you going to do what you say you're going to do? Um, take care of yourself because if you don't stay healthy, then you won't come to work. Uh, be neat and clean. Oops, I, excuse me. I, I touched my mouse and it's really sensitive. Um, so, oh my goodness. I am going to pause. Oh, okay. Sorry, there was a big pause there. I thought I paused my um, the, the recording. Um, leave your personal problems at home. Bring a cheerful attitude to work. Um, one way, and, and that we know is not easy to do. Okay. Um, never take your anger out or stress on others. So, um, you know, if you feel out of control and, you know, I think I'm speaking for myself, but most of us probably have, you know, try to remove yourself, take a break, excuse yourself, go uh, find a quiet place, take a few deep breaths. If you can't find a quiet place. The bathroom is a good place. You could sit there and take some deep breaths. Um, okay. And then uh, being professional, everything you do or say sends a message. Uh, it's so important that, you know, your body language, the way you stand, you move, your appearance, your dress, your facial expressions, your gestures, your tone of voice, all send a message, probably more than your words and definitely more than your words. Uh, try to be a good listener. So don't interrupt. Just try to listen and take it in. 
follow instructions. And this is a biggie, and a lot of people don't do this, but ask if you do not understand something or you're new. Just ask, and it could be asking your supervisor, it could be asking the patient, what do they mean by that? How do they want that? Um, get Try to get along with your coworkers. Uh, respect the chain of, chain of command. So you, you need to ask the right person and set high standards for yourself. Um, dedication and loyalty, and that is to where you're working, right? Treat everyone with respect, dignity, caring attitude, promote equality for each resident, right? Treating each resident um, the same, and there will be some residents that you like more than others. I mean, that's just human nature, um, but you have to treat them equally. Be dedicated to the people at your workplace. So if you're working there, be dedicated to work with those people and do what they say. If you don't like working there, then you need to, you know, move to a different job or try to make changes, but in the right within the organization, not talking behind their back. Um, support the ideals of the facility, show respect. Be loyal to the facility so or to the agency, meaning like you're working for a home care agency and the patient says, hey, can I you just uh, work for me and I'll pay you separately. It's in your contract that you can't do that for a certain amount of time or if at, ever at all. So that's being loyal. And follow the policies and procedures of the, the, the facility and or um, the home care. If you don't know them, then call. Um, if you're in ho at a home care, if you're in the place, ask your supervisors. Confidentiality means um, to not, to never discuss information about the, the client, okay? So this applies to all medical information, but it really applies to everything related to, related to that person. Um, their social um structures, you know, who's, who's their friends with, who family that comes visit, their financial that you may get to know. So, um, and all the records um, with confidential information should be kept secure. So you can't, you know, take them out or, or even leave them in the halls or in another person's room. Okay, next, um, being dependable. And that big one is being on time for work and getting to work, dressed appropriately, well-groomed, uh, complete all tasks, ask for clarification if needed. I can't emphasize that enough. So what are some uh, unacceptable behaviors? You know, any kind of verbal or physical, physical abuse, you know, pushing, being rough, um, uh, just not being nice verbally, um, stealing or, or taking um, or willfully, you know, breaking uh, the person's property, disobeying order from the supervisor, neglecting what you're supposed to do, altering or falsifying records, because you will have to document and as, as a home care uh, giver and in assisted living and work under the influence, right? So no drugs or alcohol while you're working, um, lying or deceiving. And, and that is the end of chapter one. There will be a study guide. Um, so thank you and sorry about that pause. Um, I'm going to stop share and let me stop the recording.